sometimes we don't convey this properly enough or, or strongly enough, but the differences between doing things in an agile way and doing things in, in a traditional way from the perspective of what we achieve, the scales are something that we, we don't quite understand. We're not talking about small incremental one, two, three percent improvements. We're actually talking about, in some cases, um, 20, 30, 40 percent improvements uh, or even more. And uh, having gone through the, uh, the, the, um, the sequence of, of videos that talks about how we get speed from Agile, hopefully you're getting a sense of that. But I want to show you some, uh, some examples. These are, these are available. So people have already published these. Um, some of the stories that I'd like to share with you, um, I, I can't share them publicly, but, um, but I, I'm, I'm always blown away by how the differences are, are quite so massive. So let's, let's look at this. Um, so uh, the, the link there um, will take you to these, these examples here. But uh, in 1956, uh, Polaris Submarine, um, <laughs> Of course, this is before Agile, right? No, it's not. Um, Agile's been going on forever. But the Polaris submarine was planned for a nine years, and it was delivered in three years. Uh, what is interesting about this story is that the plan that was used um, to deliver this uh, was a waterfall plan, but the actual delivery delivery was done Agile. Interestingly enough, um, then various consultants went off and showed how that plan was the plan that delivered in three years. It wasn't the plan. It was the, the, the other plan, the Agile plan that actually delivered that. Anyway, read that article in the, in the document and you will see something around that. The other thing that blew my mind uh, was hearing about the Empire State Building that actually got built in 13 months. Again, uh, you can research this and look at the stories about how it was built, um, how it was a, the approach to building this and you can definitely see in that some uh, agile ways of working uh, that that were uh, that were applied not a not being fixed and stuck to plans uh, and so forth so have, have fun with those um, but uh, and have a look through them the other thing that is really really interesting I've probably mentioned this one before um, but sub fighter jets are built using scrum the link that we'll put in here is to a, a short four page document the case study um, of how they have gone about doing that um, uh, both for the hardware and for the software uh, and and make being able to deliver things so much faster and and so much uh, more inexpensive um, than um, than other organizations are doing. Another great one is the story of um, uh, one of the stories of Tesla. There's so many great Tesla stories, um, but this one here particularly is, is quite quite cool. Uh, Elon Musk had uh, set himself the goal of delivering 5,000 uh, units of cars uh, per week. Um, and uh, back in Q1 of 20, um, 2018, as you can see there, uh, he only was delivering 8,000, um, just over 8,000 units per quarter. Um, so definitely not 5,000 a week. And he set the goal to achieve this by the end of Q2. Um, in Q2, um, he had actually doubled his uh, throughput um, and been able to get to 16,000. Um, look there, what happened in Q3 um, just just blew the blew the roof off the whole thing and actually got to over 54,000 units. Um, so. How was that achieved? And um, we're, we're always curious. Again, the links there, we will um, I'll publish those below. Um, but what happened was a very different style of thinking. Um, the factory uh, there, the, the, the big square building, was is the original factory. Actually, it's the same factory that we use, uh, that was used by um, by Toyota when we talk about the Numi example, which is which is another fantastic example um, of of, uh, of agile principles, agile thinking, and great leadership. But what happened here was the, they had run out of space. Um, they, the, they couldn't move things enough fast enough through the factory. So traditional thinking would say build a bigger factory. Um, of course, what these guys did was they actually built a tent in, in the parking lot um, so that they could actually move things faster. And as we uncover more around this story, the more fascinating it gets. Um, but here are a few slides, a few pictures of, of how, that was, um, how that was created. Um, and uh, a very simple thing, and that quote there, that that tweet there from from Elon Musk himself saying that they actually pull this together in three weeks, um, uh, which is how they were actually able to to ramp up so fast. So again, very different thinking from the traditional thinking. 
Um, a few uh, stories here from uh, BP who have published uh, some of their successes with Agile uh, and uh, stories the CEO here speaking or the former CEO speaking about this. I'll put again, put those links in. Um, and uh, this is this slide here tells of, of how of what they did to to, cre to create agility. And then this second slide talks about some of the outcomes that they had. I, I love the fact that they've put the people at the middle. Um, you know, people are more focused, they're making decisions more quickly, and they're having a lot more fun. Um, but if you, I'm going to zoom in here again, have a look at those, I zoom in here on some of the achievements. And, and the ones that blew me away were the fact that it used to take four months to plan a well, and they reduced that down to four weeks. So we're not talking about a little bit better, it's a little bit faster. We're talking about a massive improvement um, in what they have actually achieved. You see there, 15% decrease um, in, um, in, in how they were planning what another particular well um, and, and some, of the, some of the savings that they have been able to make. Again, they are, they're really quite significant. It's not, you don't just get little bits of incremental things going on, it is massive. And then just finally, this story here, a friend of mine, Giles um, Lindsay, um, he runs the Agile Confessional podcast. Really recommend you take a look at that. Um, he joined this company, this fintech in London. Um, and when he joined, uh, they were basically struggling to, um, they were releasing, they re had released three projects in the last six months. Um, and um, there were no new core releases in, in 15 months, and there was a high attrition rate as well. People were um, people were leaving the company at, um, hand over fist. Um, just a few months, uh, just three months later, after he joined, um, he was he delivered three projects um, uh, and was actually starting to move things forward really, really fast. But again, the, the the change is just massive. It's not a little bit better; it's massively better. By the end of that financial year, so from twenty, uh, so from September twenty sixteen to seventeen, um, they'd actually delivered one hundred and nine projects. So, so not going from three six to maybe twelve. That would have been amazing. Um, you know, fifteen would have been awesome. No, one hundred and nine. <laughs> it's this is this is this is the impact that we can have. Um, if we really get behind this, uh, and um, and look at this, and you will find your own stories, and you will have your own stories. Remember to write these down um, for yourself as evidence that you will have um, to show other people just how much you can get out of uh, using um, these the mindset um, to do things differently. Um, and if you're willing to, and if you can, please do share those stories with me, because I would love to be able to um, pass them out around the world um, if I'm allowed to, if you'll allow me to. If not, just send them to me and tell me that it's private and it's for no one else. I would just love to hear the stories because it just fuels my enthusiasm for this, as if I needed to be any more enthusiastic. Anyway, see you in the next video.